Hello, everyone. Good to see all of you again after a long gap. We are back with yet another episode on anthropology. And specifically speaking, we will discuss biological anthropology in some detail. But keep in mind, uh, our anthropology optional is not just about biology per se, but it is about biological anthropology, where we emphasize more on the applications of these biological aspects to humans, to humanity, right? That's what anthropology is. It's a discipline of infinite curiosity about humans. So that's an important sort of a distinction to keep in mind. So a biology answer isn't necessarily a biological anthropology answer. And one more thing, uh, most of the students probably think that biology portion is going to be taxing, it's going to be slightly challenging, but trust me, that is not the case at all. Biology is in fact quite easy. And in fact, a lot of fun as well. And you yourself will realize this thing after watching these videos on the playlist. Uh, so in this playlist, we will start from the very basics uh, and try to sort of help you build some interest and more importantly, help you build a strong foundation when it comes to biological anthropology. So without any further delay, let's get started. So see, we are starting biological anthro. Okay, Biological anthro is one of the four different sort of subtopics of anthro. Okay, who said this? If anybody knows, basically this sort of a classification. So, so this kind of a classification is different Okay, by different scholars, the one that we have as biological anthro, social cultural anthro, archaeological anthro, and linguistic anthro. This is by uh, you know historical particular school. Uh, you know the main person there that's Franz Boas. Now that is not so important. the The thing that is important for us to understand is that we are looking at biology, right? This particular portion. So, biology versus biological anthro. Biology, how do you spell biology? There you go, versus biological anthro. See, there are two things here. This, this is basically my anthropology, right? Uh, some of you guys already know, okay? This is my shortcut for anthropology. Don't write this in exam, yeah? Okay, see, biology is one aspect and biological anthro is another aspect. Anthro basically means study of man across space and time. So biology with respect to man, okay? So the applications of biology in, you know, for humanity. Right? That is basically your biological anthro, if I want to put it in a very, very simple sort of a manner. Now, there are certain aspects here. So, for instance, you know, what is evolution? How did we come to be who we are? Who are our ancestors? Right? Can we explain sort of variation? How come, you know, uh, different people in different continents look different? Right? You know, why exactly? In fact, one of the questions that was asked to me in, I think, in one of the mock interviews, the interviews was like the, the Mongoloids, okay, the East Asians or Southeast Asians, they have a different sort of an eye, right? What exactly sort of uh, created that sort of a change? Okay, was it natural selection? So basically, again, variation. Why are they different? So some people have very dark skin. Some people have extremely pale white skin. Some people have, uh, uh, you know, sort of other sort of features, right? All of these things explaining that sort of variation. After that, we also realized that, you know, since biology, there has been a lot of improvement. For instance, genetics has come in. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so genetics. So once genetics come in, then you will realize that, okay, it is about hereditary uh, nature, you know, like what exactly is inheritance? Why do you look more like your parents? Or why do you look like your mother and not like your father? Okay, why do your brother looks, you know, your brother looks a little different. So these are your uh, variation. Okay, so races, for instance, you know, blood groups, there are many of these things. So study of, you know, your evolution, your variation, uh, you know, advanced biology as in genetics, and a whole lot of applications in chapter 12. Okay, these are your biological anthro. So we'll take a look at, you know, this evolution, evolution, you know, really launches us really well into this particular topic of bio. Because in evolution, we did not start with bio, we started with something else. Okay. How did we come to be who we are? That's a very different story for all of us. Okay. In the 1600s, that's a different story. In different parts of the world, that's a different story. 21st century is sort of a same story in many parts of the world. And explain by what I mean by that. See, okay. So the whole idea is that, see, modern scientific development methodologies. So paleontology as a field, okay. It has sort of contributed a lot to understanding our own past. Okay, because we start looking at the fossils, we start digging deep and we try to see what exactly is there. And we try to sort of reconstruct the past based on the kind of, uh, the kind of evidence that we, uh, you know, come across. And through that, we are able to trace back our origins. Okay, not just with mythological stories, but based on evidences. Okay, but based on evidences. So through those evidences, you will realize that we proposed a few theories. This sort of uh, 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 understanding is very, very important, right? So when you write, let us say about, you know, the first theory, the second theory, the third theory, 
it should it should come into your answer it should reflect in your answer without you know even you saying so let's see this is the path that we have taken right and it is sort of important because you know through systematic study is how we have actually gotten to where we are at the moment in our understanding of our past is that sort of clear okay you know how we evolve right so darwin has played a very important role to say that okay we have actually come from simpler forms to today's forms based on you know you must have heard natural selection all of those so the the, the sequence is here so first is religious theories the second is pre darwinian theories and then darwinian theories and post darwinian theories from this itself you can understand that in this evolution debate or evolution concept darwin is an important stand uh, important sort of a, a milestone okay in so much so that anything that is before him is put as pre darwin their names are not so important it is important for us okay but you know can you understand all of those things are sort of you know clubbed into pre darwinian theories anything that is after that is post darwinian theories so darwin big contribution but even before all of these theories came how we came to be who we are it actually was based on religion okay i you know and creationism is something that you can you can talk about okay in your introduction or something so what is creationism creationism and evolution so there are so i i'll give you an example in 2000 uh, whenever okay so there was this uh, election when hillary clinton was up for elections uh, uh, with barack obama and, and i remember this thing in our university uh, you know uh, you know they were talking about you know uh, how do you select the right person so chelsea clinton had come to our campus and bill, bill clinton had come to our campus so she basically mentioned amongst the republican party members 11 members were standing okay and when they were contesting three of them basically said that they do not believe in evolution okay uh, they believe in creationism meaning you know uh, evolution does not explain how we are here on earth it is actually based on what the bible says or what you know your religious belief says now this is not to say that you know it is only in christianity or something that is what i am giving you in this example in hinduism also there is a particular theory that says you know how we are okay if you can remember it great or you know and maybe your grandmother has told you a different story that you know in compared to somebody else's you know family okay hinduism is quite heterodox so creationism basically believes that all species okay are fixed products you did not come from ape you did not come from you know uh, you know some common ancestor of you know some you know with some other animals you have been placed here just like how you you know you are today okay in the form of adam and eve okay and if you guys know some other theory then you know that is another sort of creationist theory okay and this was so important at that particular point that you know you cannot question these things because you're going against the social religious sort of establishment can you say anything against the church okay we cannot so uh, so yeah so that is the important sort of take away from here creationism is something that you don't have to write but i'm just telling you that before we go into pre darwin or lamarckism theory remember that creationism is the reason why lamarck despite the fact that his theory is like so wrong okay it is still valuable in in many ways because of this particular reason because he was the first one to have the audacity to come and say hey based on evidences that i have collected even though my theory may be wrong okay even though my theory may be wrong based on evidences i can say creationism is not the right way to think about this i'll just give you some uh, uh, some examples right um in creationism in fact there are many even darwin's you know grand uncle or his uncle all of those people were involved but they do not want to speak too much about this for a primary reason that you know you do not want to go against the church even darwin did not write about this for the longest duration because he was sort of scared of repercussions and consequences a couple of names i'm taking there are there are many people involved in this okay so james usher okay so he was a uh, archbishop okay now the nileland and all of that so basically he arrives at a particular date of creation based on counting the number of generations from the bible all the way till today and then he sets that date at october 23rd 4004 bc okay and in fact this was not contested by a lot of people in fact the only sort of debate that they used to have is that hey uh, is your method of calculation right not you know the premise of you know counting from bible and similarly there is another person who in fact he was a professor at cambridge university he also during this time period he basically said no it is 9 am on october 23rd 4004 based on my calculation so you can imagine you know until the free darwin the wrong theory started coming about based on evidence at least you know a whole lot of these theories were based on you know uh, you know mythology and certain other aspects but what is evolution see evolution ka definition also sort of changes right Uh, i think recently i exposed you guys to a, a concept to some of you right uh, evolution of evolution right that is what we are taking a look at see evolution in the beginning was 
okay, is a change in the characteristics of species over several generations. Okay, okay, that's it. Don't write about this. We will come to this natural selection. Okay, so basically that we are saying that there is a gradual change over time. So 2 million years ago, you cannot be, your ancestors cannot look like you. They may not have looked like you. How would they have looked? Somewhere ape-like and somewhere human-like. Okay, so as you go past, okay, it was, you're gradually changing into what you are today. Okay, this is your evolutionism. Hindu beliefs, what is it? We have Vishnu, Brahma, Shiva, right? And amongst this thing, Vishnu is the preser uh, preserver, okay, Shiva is the destroyer, and Brahma is the creator. You guys know about all of these things, right? I don't have to go about all of those. Hiranyakarbha has another theory that says, you know, there's a golden womb, you know, that is, that is uh, according to Vedic philosophy, that is like the, you know, the entire cosmos has basically come from here. It is life on earth starts from here. Okay, the entire universe starts from here. Okay, Hinduism is quite heterodox. You might also believe in some other sort of a uh, theory in this thing. Okay, so that is that. But, okay, the reason why this does not come in any science is because creationism versus evolution is not a scientific debate. Okay, this is more of a religious debate. Okay, and it is not important to us in today's uh, sort of uh, today's you know day and age. But however, it was of prime importance because nobody wanted to even talk about evolution because of fear of you know going against the creationists. Okay, so having said this, let us talk about the first theory. Okay, um, of evolution. So the term evolution was first applied by an English philosopher. Okay, Herbert Spencer, important name. Okay, so he basically says the, the forms basically go from simple to complex, from homogeneous forms to heterogeneous forms. And even the ones who studied basic bio, basic uh, geography or something, you know that, you know, life started as a unicellular kind of a thing, and then it slowly becomes more and more bigger and bigger, right, multicellular. So this is not something that, you know, um, nobody contests this, okay, today. But back in the day, somebody had to be radical enough to come and say that, right? Okay. Evolution again, so many different definitions over a long duration of maybe like around 200 years. See, another word that is being introduced is that this is inheritable changes. What does inheritable mean? You did not change just like that. You changed based on what was, you know, your parental generation possessing. And that is possibly, you know, the same sort of direction will continue into the next generation from you into your next generation. So there is a aspect of inheritance. Okay. And genetics basically has a lot of study of inheritance. And there are many tools for us to study it, like pedigree analysis, you know, drawing those family charts. Only takeaway from this particular slide is that we started as unicellular. And then as time passed on, we became multicellular. By the way, all of these things are there in your basic NCRT. So these are not something new. Okay, these are only setting you up for um, the main topics that are yet to come. What could be the change here? What resulted in this? One thing is, is over a period of time because we say it's a gradual change. But another thing is also change in environment. This is basically change, okay? mathematical lingo, delta. So as environment changes over a long duration, okay, we, the species, also sort of evolve along with it. Right? We also evolve along with it. That's the whole point. So, and change in environment is basically what the geo-environment. No need to write all of these things. Just, just understand this. I will tell you from where you have to start noting down. Okay? The first uh, question that you could start getting from here is going to be Lamarck. Okay, but in case your answer can reflect some of the sort of context, okay, of your understanding, then there is nothing like it. Okay, it will be too good. So the whole idea is going to be, again, I'll just refresh this. Okay, so initially, we start with creationism. If there is a question about evolution of evolutionary theories, I will, you know, I will probably introduce creationism. I'll probably give a line or two. Okay, but generally, you don't have to. It starts with pre-Darwin. Okay, 
कैपिटल डी ओके एंड इसमें हमारे सिलेबस में है लमाक ओके एंड देन नेक्स्ट इज डार्विन ओके एंड देन वील हैव पोस्ट डार्विन सो एनीथिंग दैट केम आफ्टर डार्विन ओके सो पोस्ट डार्विन सो डार्विन बेसिकली हैपन इन 1859 okay in his very famous book of otus of the on the origin of species right um so that came out in 1859 but that time you know biology was like so so basic we did not have much sort of advancements we don't know what is a gene we don't know anything right so post on every sort of idea in biology that came about okay and that applied to darwinism is called your post darwinism okay and that synthetic theory there are some things okay synthetic theory so basically pre darwin darwin okay and post darwin and by now you know that okay one theory will come in and that will not be good enough so next theory will come in that will disprove this particular theory that will improve upon it and then so on okay so this is the one there is no year in which you do not write an answer to this every single year will have some questions on this okay because this is the sort of the the the, the basics of the entire topic okay entire anthro when i say see just a, just an example can you guys see this uh, picture and you will see a lot of these dog related things in in our class uh, for a reason because you know i love dogs okay and hopefully i can convert some of you into dog lovers as well but kidding aside just think about this Eight, uh, 1899 1925 all the way till today can you guys see the difference if anybody cannot see this is the backbone now it's uh, blue is not visible but at least here maybe so my grandmother's home generally used to have uh, this german shepherd since you know the 1950s i've seen pictures in these old black and white photos right and the first few dogs look not very different from this you know in fact uh, uh, shali was in the 1970s she had a very straight back okay and almost like this right but look at this now it has changed and similarly if you are going back like 12000 years 15000 years depending upon the studies you will notice that you know all of these sort of different animals that you see okay they've all been derived from are their common ancestor which is the wolf okay now how many uh, breeds are there so many different breeds are there one is like too big one is too small one is smart one is lazy you know whole lot of things are there one has got a floppy ears one has got pointed ears okay whole lot of things so you know okay so there is evolution okay but primarily here in biological uh, in anthro we discuss evolution in terms of human evolution because we don't care about other things as much right primarily because this is about application to humans so remember that Hope you guys are finding a biological anthropology playlist useful for your preparation. Uh, hope this video helped reinforce your basics and also helped you connect a little better with the applications. If there's any other aspect of anthropology that you would like to know more about, uh, do let us know in the comment section, and we will try to make videos on those as well. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.